Hello everyone, it's Rali and welcome. So I missed yesterday's blog post. I was busy. Uh, I've been working on the uh, regional lore videos like I've been telling you guys and I want to get the series done and then release it. Uh, so I was working on a, on one of those videos and I completely missed that we had a blog post. I tend to forget that now we have Wednesdays uh, where blog posts come out, which is kind of odd. It used to be Tuesdays, which was like perfect for me, but Wednesdays is kind of iffy for me, so I'm like, Ugh. so I I tend to kind of miss sometimes the you know when there's an announcement or something, um, like or a big blog post or something. Um, this one I thought was kind of important though. So this is a blog post where Arena is talking about feedback that they took from the Spear beta, uh, that we had like a few few weeks back, and that's really exciting to me. So uh, if you have been following my channel, um, you will kind of know if you if you haven't been following the channel, um. I, I've been kind of critical um, on, you know, critiquing um, ArenaNet on a lot of things uh, just because I feel like, I, I don't know, I, I just feel like that sometimes they can do better than what we get and I get a little critical of them because they might not fully admit that something they did was wrong. Anyways, it doesn't really matter, but the point being is that usually when we start these videos, these blog post videos and stuff, I usually have an opinion right up front, right? I'll say like, oh, this is really good or this is really bad or whatever, then we'll read through it. But most many times now it's happened where I read through a post and I'm like, okay, this wasn't really what I was expecting. So I'm going to kind of stay back. I'm going to what I will applaud a it for is that I'm glad we got an in-depth blog post. I will applaud them for that right up front. Um, but I, what I will say is I think I'm going to go through the blog post and then give you guys my overall opinion on this because I tend to kind of get ahead of myself when I do these things um, and I kind of I'm like, oh, this is exactly what I wanted. Oh, my God, I'm so happy for this. And then I read through it and it's like, wow, this is really not what I wanted. You know, so uh, let's just kind of read through it. So it's a blog post about the Spear uh, Beta, Spear Beta, and um, <clears throat> they will tell us hopefully exactly what they took away from. Like I said, I just kind of skimmed through it. I didn't read anything. I literally, I didn't read anything. I, I have no idea. I think I read like one sentence of the warrior thing and that's it. So I don't know anything about this. <clears throat> so let's go in. Uh, let's pull it up here. So sharp lessons, a spear beta. I can't say that spear, spear beta feedback. Like I can't say it fast. I don't know, whatever. Greetings, wayfinders. I, you know, still iffy about that wayfinder thing. Anyways, my name is Taylor Trigg Brooks. Um, Taylor has been with the company for a long time now, I think, right? Uh, I feel like I've seen that name pop up many times now. I'm a combat designer here at ArenaNet. We ran a beta event in June for the new Guild Wars 2 Janthea Wilds combat feature, Land Spear Proficiency. Today, I'll go over the feedback we saw about the spears and the changes you can expect to see when the weapons are released this August. I, I really, I, I love this. I, I Like I said, right up front, I, I do like that they're taking feedback. Like, you know, it might kind of sound like I'm, I'm a little like, eh, you know, but I, I really like that they are taking feedback. I don't know. There's just something I've been recently talking about how I feel like Arena is so detached from the player base, they kind of just like release whatever and they may do make whatever. And it's really like and everyone's just kind of like, we didn't want this. Like, why are you making these things? Right. So I, I really like that we're, we're getting a little bit of this bridge back right between between the two things. Um, this blog will outline uh, what we feel are the most impactful changes at a broad level. The full list of changes will be detailed in the expansion. Yeah. So um, obviously they're not going to give us, but that's all I'm looking for. I'm looking for like, what is the biggest parts of everything that you like every profession? What are the biggest parts that you took away? What's the feedback that you saw? Because obviously, you know, I only see a fraction of the feedback. Like I don't go on the forums. I don't really, I'm not part of like different discord servers, which a lot of developers are They're They're, you know, part of like the snow crows, you know, discord or whatever, right. They're part of like all these other discords where perhaps there's feedback as well that they have been looking at. Right. Um, there's feedbacks on all kinds of different, like, you know, tabloid websites and stuff where maybe someone has some insightful insightful stuff you know there's different youtubers there's different content creators there's people on twitter you know there's all these different like platforms that you kind of have to consider it's also another question that i would kind of have is like and they might outline this in here i'm not sure but is it only forum feedback that you look at or are you looking at like 
all kinds of like like I said, all these different things that I've listed. Like it'd be interesting to kind of see where where they go with it. We get a, get a really cool picture here. <clears throat> um, these are the characters they used right in the trailer. Yeah, I think these are the characters. Yes, these are the characters they used in the trailers, which is really um. Some of them are kind of funky looking. Like, this is so weird. Like, she has these blue shoes on, and they don't really fit with, like, any of this stuff. It's kind of weird. Anyways. Uh, all right. So, Elementalists. We're starting with the Elementalists. I think... Um, oh, they're going at random order, because Elementalist was, like, one of the later ones, I want to say. And then Necromancer was one of the middle ones. Doesn't matter. Uh, Spear-wielding Elementalists sought to harness the power of natural disasters to bring calamity to their enemies. It is the most visually ambitious weapon we have created it hands down is uh, and we couldn't be prouder of the art team's work however in the beta the damage wasn't as impressive as uh, impressive as the visuals were um <clears throat> oh god i have to like think back it's like such a long time for me at this point where i'm like i've been doing so many different things like guild wars related and other things and i'm like um, so I have to kind of think back. Were the numbers kind of iffy on that? I think maybe they were. Yeah, so I think I can agree that. We agree with the feedback that the weapon's power level landed too low. And you can expect to see damage increases for all game modes, especially for the capstone etching skills. That Those were the capstone etching skills. Those I remember being kind of lackluster. Um, I think those are, I think the capstone etching skills are the ones where it's like you have to use three skills and then you unlock this like one powerful move or whatever. And they felt very underwhelming. Where it's just like, wow, we we're building up this big, like, ooh, you know, big, big moment where we're unleashing all this power of, you know, again, calamity, na natural disasters kind of thing. And it didn't feel like that. So, um, okay, so more damage on that. Uh, I, you know, I, I'm one of those people. I'm always okay with more damage. I, I have kind of given up on the whole, because for a long time, and I've talked about this so much, like, power creep has been huge in Guild Wars 2. Like, even in recent years. I mean, there's content now that you go back, like, if you go back to the early strike missions from Ice Boot Saga, which weren't that long ago, but the power creep is, like, huge. Because back then, I remember the strike missions were, like, there was some difficulty to it. Like, when you take the very first one, the the snow path pass or what a snow snow pass whatever it's called right with the with the uh ice golem or whatever it's like the first strike mission anyways um and uh there was some challenge i remember like when it first came out there was some challenge to it and people were like wow this is really like raid level like you know close to raid level stuff or whatever you know you need to kind of come compose a team and actually have like you know a little bit of organization and but now it's just like you can take like 10 damage dealers and you can just like go in and just like throw whatever at it and you'll get the gold reward you know so power creep has been huge and for a long time i was one of the advocates of like <clears throat> we need to tone it down we need to bring it we need to find some way to do the balancing after i for those of you that haven't played guild wars one so guild wars one had like a really interesting system where balancing was very automatic um because in guild wars one enemies would use the same skills that players used so when you when you buff a skill <clears throat> excuse me guys <clears throat> i got like a cough or something i don't know whatever anyways i'm fine uh, <laughs> um but so enemies in guild wars one would use player skills or like you know whatever they would use the same kind of skills uh so when you buff the skill in guild wars one it would buff the enemy as well. So there was like the automatic balance. So there wasn't really, there, there was no such thing as power creep in Guild Wars 1. Because, you know, if they make Firestorm to be this like ultimately destructive power, right? And it's just like, oh my god, well, there's a bunch of enemies that use Firestorm as well, and that will decimate you, you know? So um, I've always been like an advocate for like, man, I wish there was a way that they could find like a way to balance the game, you know? It's like, Content like um, dungeons and stuff, like Ascalonian Catacombs, I remember when the game came out, were really, really tough to do, like even with level 80, just because a lot of people, you know, it was new, the game was new, a lot of people, we didn't have the resources we have now, we didn't have Discord servers and websites where builds were, and, you know, we didn't have all this equipment and all these things, right? There, there, it was harder in that sense, but it was also like the skills were like just way less powerful like you know aoe's were much smaller and rechargers were much longer and like all these things you know and um it, now i can go through like ascalon and catacombs you know by my like by myself and be fine you know and not even uh really sweat 
Like it, it's it's kind of crazy. So I've always wanted them to kind of find a way to balance and not have the power creep. But power creep is just I guess it's a natural thing of games like this. And it's just kind of at this point, I'm just like, yeah, give me more power. I don't care. Give me more damage. I'm OK with it. Whatever. I just, you know, I kind of given up on that part. Um, anyways. <clears throat> Alongside damage enhancements, uh, we'll be making the following quality of life adjustments to the weapon. Etching durations will be increased by a few seconds, which is good. I do remember the etchings, um, like, not lasting long enough. So there was kind of like, um, okay, uh, what the heck, right? Um, so that's nice. I like that. Uh, while Ripple's distance is now controllable through a ground target. While Ripple's distance? Ripple, is that like a... Is that is that like the water one? Is that the water that because the sentence itself is kind of etching durations will be increased by a few seconds while ripples distance is now controllable through a ground target. OK, um, I, I think that's the water one. That sounds like the water capstone thing that they were talking about, like the ultimate skill, um, which sends out like this. It's you use three skills in the etchings and you get like another like a like a flip over skill or whatever on the etchings. And um, the water one is like this wave that you send out, which is kind of cool. I really love the effect of it. Uh, seethe and energize. Well, now I don't know which ones those are. I have no clue. I mean, this one sounds like an air magic one. I don't know. Air attunement one uh, will not affect auto attacks and the visual noise of etchings has been reduced. So that was a huge thing. Vis visual noise for a lot of people. Um, just because they were very dark, very like they were very saturated in color, uh, and a lot of people, especially when you de well dealt with the fire one, because the fire one is black and red, and you know it would it covers up the ground, and a lot of people were afraid of um, not being able to see ground targeting by enemies. So uh, a lot of people said kind of take the color out and leave the symbols, which I a hundred percent agree with because I don't understand why we need to have the ground colored in. Like, just leave the, like, because they have so many, like, symbols, and even on the other spear, like, you know, because I went through and I translated all the, like, different um, lettering and stuff, and, and I remember, like, when I was going through, like, a bunch of the different ones that have, like, symbols or, like, glyphs or, you know, runes or whatever, right, like, different languages, like, written out, um, a lot of them didn't have, like, a, like a background, like, a, the ground is colored, right, it was just kind of, like, see-through. You know, and I'm like, we could do that for all of those. I don't understand. We don't really need the ground like that wouldn't make it like an ugly skill and it wouldn't take away from the like pizzazz that is those skills. I really think that they should put those to take those away, you know, but um, we'll see how they have reduced them. Um, you know, again, just general information. So but I do like that they listened to that. I think that was a big concern uh, for a lot of people. We've also added a strike damage component to uh, Fulger, which that is the I remember that was the um, air attunement skill and rebalance some of its effectiveness away from the damage over time and PvE for a more immediate effect. Um, that was that the like tornado one? No, that wasn't the tornado one. I don't remember which ones they are. But anyways, so gave it a strike damage thing and took away the damage over time thing to give it a more immediate effect. Okay, sure. Uh, we're opening these changes in a smoother experience with greater impact. So this is the el elementalist. Um, I, you know, I, I'm gonna be honest. So for some people, this might be like, ooh, that's lackluster. Um, honestly, elementalist, in my opinion, personally, it was one of the better performing ones. Um, I think the only thing that was really iffy for me, maybe, like if I, I if I really think about it, might have been really the damage i might have really not felt the damage but again i i don't because i don't have like optimized builds you know i don't go in with like perfectly meta builds and i'm like oh this is the number set you know this is what i'm gonna get out of it so i didn't really know but i i feel like if i had to probably give feedback i feel like on the elementals i probably would have only given like a power thing because i like the visuals i like well the ice beam one i wish it would last a little bit longer which was the i think that's the two skill on the water attunement i wish that would last a little bit longer there's a couple of things like that but you know the thing is that this is again just general and no specifics on it um and you never know they might decide to still make some changes even then right like they might still think oh let's just kind of and even even people also need to realize like when the release comes that's usually not the end of it 
right? We do get a little bit of balance even after that. I will say that Arena is pretty quick on abandoning new weapons. Like the end of Dragon's weapons, there's a lot of very lackluster weapons. Or even like Secrets of the Obscure has very lackluster weapons and they've already been abandoned. So, um, Yes, Arena Net is quick to abandon weapons that I feel like they don't understand how to balance, maybe. I don't I don't know what it is about them abandoning certain weapons that should perform a lot better, but they don't. Um but we will at least have probably a couple of updates to some of the spears still, even after the initial release. So we might still see even more changes. Necromancer is really short. That's just one paragraph. Uh, Necromancers aim to execute their foes with both spear and soul shards. With a gameplay loop of building and spending these soul shards, we saw that the shard economy was too dominated by ice, uh, isolate and distress. We are increasing soul shard generation outside of the fourth spear skill, and soul shard duration will now be refreshed when you gain more shards. That was something that really bothered me. Um, I don't think I voiced that, but I think that was something that I realized after the fact. Or I think I think I didn't realize it until I read someone else's feedback on like Reddit or something. And I was like, you know what? I agree with that. That the soul shards had like their own cooldown. So like even if I gained more soul shards, my first one would still expire. So if the first I don't know what 10 seconds was the the countdown or something but i don't know how long they lasted like 10 or 15 seconds or something so that wouldn't refresh even if i got new soul shards so i would need to hurry up and try to get six as much as i could in order to not have the first one run out and that feels a little weird so i do like that a lot uh with those changes and uh lowering of the threshold needed to uh immobilize with adol we're hoping the weapon has more consistent power level and doesn't feel as weak when you miss isolate Isolate, which isolate was the uh, isolate was the was that the that's the two skill is that the two skill I don't know I don't remember again uh, names names are just like phew. no ex extirpate was the two skill right so I don't know what isolate was additionally extirpate will now generate life force as well uh that was uh I do remember like I didn't realize that myself because I didn't I don't think I really went into like when I tested it um I didn't really go into shroud or anything but I do. I I do remember seeing people saying like it doesn't really generate a lot of life force um and that's kind of lackluster because it you know the thing is that you know they talk about a gameplay loop necromancers have a gameplay loop already built in with their shroud right like you go into shroud and you use it until your shroud you know your your life force runs out and then you go into your regular and you build shroud back up right there's a gameplay loop so you already have one in there but I remember that Spear kind of interrupted that um, from what I understand, like from what people, you know, the feedback that I read, um, people were like, yeah, I, I mean, it's just like I sit there and I'm trying to like generate life wars and it's just not happening on Spear. And then I got to swap weapons, you know, and that kind of makes Spear like I don't want to go back into Spear because once I get out of Shroud, I, you know, and I go into Spear, then I'm not generating life force. I need to generate life force. So having something extirpate generating life force, I think that's good. Um, that being the only thing they took away from Necromancer, might th that might be lackluster. Again, I'm not. I'm not a professional. I have no idea how to make a build, guys. I'm literally like, okay, we're slotting these things, and if they don't work, oh well. Um, <clears throat> it's like that skill looks pretty, or that sounds really nice, or whatever, you know. Um, so I don't know. Uh, again, let me know. Let me know what you guys think. Like, did, does Necromancer need more changes? Do you guys think that this is sufficient to make them feel uh, good? Um, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so Mesmer, Mesmer, um, Mesmer, I thought was one of the better ones. I thought Mesmer landed really well. I was very worried about um, the one, the the five skill has to hit on the like outer edge of the skill in order to for you to get the whatever it's called the clarity effect i'm reading it right now i'm like clarity um to get the clarity effect um and i was worried that it was kind of hard to hit that it's really not um so that was one thing that i remember saying and it felt really nice um it looked visually really nice and it felt really nice to use and i really liked it i, I liked M mesmer was one of the ones i really enjoyed um you know i i don't remember what my rankings were i have no no clue i remember mesmer was up there though um and i i love the visuals of it i love again the you know all of the spears kind of have like this thing 
where they like you know they they have like a mechanic or whatever that they build off of and i like the mesmer mechanic with the clarity i thought it was really nice i liked it um mesmer sphere provided a unique gameplay pattern and we were happy to see uh it find use in many places the beta event gave us clarity ha 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 uh, about how we could make the weapon feel more better feel even better jesus where did more come from i have no idea um the largest problem we got feedback on was the weapon's performance varied a lot depending on whether you had clarity clearly clarity will now be gained by hitting mind the gap regardless of whether it was on the outer edge hit oh they took that away oh i didn't even think that was that bad interesting um i i mean i was one of the people that was hugely worried about that that mind the gap would not See, and then now the name doesn't really make that much of sense, that much sense. So I kind of, I don't like that. Hmm. That's that, that kind of, I feel like that kind of destroys a little bit. Like I'm one of those people. I, I mean, I like every, like I'm one of those people that likes simplicity, but Mesmer is a complicated class and it's supposed to kind of work complicated. So that's a little iffy, but the outer edge will still be important. <laughs> Arali, keep reading. Uh, we're updating the visual to better outline where the hitbox is, okay, and the skill will still deal increased damage as well as a guaranteed critical hit on the outer edge. Okay, so they're kind of going, okay, I guess, so Mind the Gap still has, there. there is still an importance to having that, you know, hitting on the gap, so I guess that's okay. Um, I can see where they're coming from. They, they didn't want to solely have it rely on, like, clarity being on the outer edge and that having be the main mechanic because then movement becomes super important. And I feel like, you know, as someone that doesn't raid, and I think about, like, raiding, positioning is super important. And sometimes you have to be, like, on certain spots. Like, you have to stand right here. And if that's, like, too close to the enemy or something, and you don't hit them with the outer edge or something, like, that might become an issue. I'm not sure. Um, but, okay, I, I'm i okay with that. I'm, I, you know what? I'm, I'm okay with that. I still, I, I, I like the updating on the visual. I hope I don't, I don't, I hope it's not going to be too noisy of visual, you know, on the ground uh, because it's already like it has this really cool pattern. And when it when the skill comes out, it's really it looks really cool. It's vi visually the team like uh, what what do we call them? The 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 um the art team, the art team is what did it. OK, I always want to make sure that I address them. I don't know. I don't know who, who did it. Who knows? Um, but the art team did really well on the Mesmer skills, too. They look beautiful. And um, yeah, so uh, that and then increased critical damage that kind of uh, that's kind of nice because I feel like that goes a little bit into uh, they were talking about trying to make um, power mirage a thing right like power mirage is something that i've seen a lot of people talk about i haven't tried it myself um but it looks like this would be a good contender for a power mirage um because getting a critical hit you know it's like i mean that's straight up just power right um so that's kind of nice uh imaginary inversion is also seeing a shift in how the skill functions to help the consistency of the of the tools it brings it will now always clear conditions from you at the start of casting with no clarity required it will also heal you if you evade an attack i don't know which one that is um again i just i don't know names um i'm guessing this is like an evasion skill that healed so i i'm guessing context context clues here tell me that imaginary inversion was an evade that would clear conditions if you had clarity but now you don't need clarity to get the conditions i don't know how many conditions are cleared um even if you don't land the attack portion clarity will now increase this healing okay so clarity still functions but it just increases the healing on it um which is nice having um i like having sustain on weapons uh i'm one of those people i'm like oh i need a second heal kind of thing um so again, this goes, I mean, this, this really speaks to like, again, a little bit of mirage a little bit. I, I could really see like a really good mirage build come out of this. Uh, the final large change to the weapon concerns its phantasms. We saw in the beta that the uh, lancers routinely got outplayed by terrain, whether that was in cliff. So that was the ones that would like strike through, right? Those are the ones where they like cross again, like through the enemy and then would like disappear i think right uh, the lancers have taken a more vertical approach to their attack and they will now jump in the air and launch launch a spear at their target instead 
This will be able to damage an area on impact, a much more reliable follow-up for the Mesmer. Oh, that's cool. Um, hmm. I'm still sad that the, like, cross lancer thing i mean i get that there's like a problem with terrain and stuff um you know whether that was a cliff or a small pebble um thieves will know the feeling uh, people that have main thieves for a long time will know the problem um with you know no valid path to target has been a huge issue um or was a huge issue for a long time it's gotten a lot better now but uh many many skills uh literally you would have a small pebble in front of you like I remember the biggest the biggest one that I remember talking about. That's why I said Thief was the short bow five on Thief, which is like the little teleport. Like you, you fire an arrow and you teleport to the location. And oh my god, I tell you, in the early days of Guild Wars 2, that skill, you could not... You had a small pebble in front of you, you're no valid pass to target. So you wouldn't teleport. And I was just like, wh why? Why can't I do that? There was even like flat planes sometimes where you couldn't do it. It was It was... It was a nightmare, so I'm glad that they fixed that. Um, again, do we like the launching of the spear? I feel like we have seen a lot of that. I don't know if I'm okay, or have we seen a lot of that? I don't know if we... No, we really haven't seen a lot of that. We really only have the warrior that does that. Um, like, jump up and throw a spear. I think we don't get too much of it. We, uh, I think the... Um, the elementalist does that too. I'm not sure, but um, anyways, uh, are you guys gonna miss the? Uh, I, I I might miss the cross lancers. I thought that was kind of a cool thing. Uh, the spear will damage. Yeah. So, but we get an AOE out of it. So I guess there's like a, a consolation price. I guess you know. Um, thief spear endeavored to uh, the thief spear endeavored to bring the skill chaining mechanic used by assassins in the original Guild Wars into the modern game. Again, this was really funny to me, uh, just for those of you that maybe didn't watch my betas or didn't watch my whatever, right? The skill chaining had already been implemented in Guild Wars 2. They took the skill chaining that the assassin had in Guild Wars 1, and that's how they made the auto attacks in Guild Wars 2. That was one of the things they talked about a lot back then, um, that they wanted to kind of integrate that, because they didn't... They were talking about how th that was a big thing for Guild Wars 2 before it came out, is that they didn't want to just have you... You can watch actually one of the earlier trailers, I think it was the manif uh, Manifesto trailer, um, where they talk about, oh, I swing a sword, and I swing a sword again, and I swing it again. Like, they didn't want, um, you know, if you're not using a skill, to just sit there and auto-attack, right? So they created a different auto-attack system where you would go through actual skills, that you would use, but they would chain, right? And that's why many, many skills have, like, three uh, weapons, uh, weapons like, skills, I guess, that you go through, that you chain through. And that had originally stemmed, from what I understand, from the assassin from Guild Wars 1, which, you know, had that. So we already kind of have that, um, and they're, they're bringing it back on a, in a different way with the Thief. Um, it was interesting. It was kind of strange, because I really felt like the the three line wasn't as good as the two the two line was just hands down like really really good though so the the two you know the the three skills in the in the two weapon slot right um they were supposed to be like condi i think and then three was supposed to be like straight up power damage but like i i really think that two like just Oh my god, even on power damage, probably did, like, way more. I think, like, 3 was also supposed to be more, like, utility-ish. I think there was, like, a... Wasn't there, like, a... um, Like, a stealth skill in there? I'm not sure, but... um, Yeah, so, I, I don't know. But um, I liked it. I mean, I, I really think that there was something... um, There, there was something that... The, I think the condition damage was really good. I have a feeling they're kind of going with the ones that performed best first, and then going with the ones that didn't perform. Or, well, Guardian performed actually really well, so I don't know. Or I thought it did well. I don't know. Um, anyways, uh, we were pleased to see how it turned out, but we found that it could use some polish. We will be changing a rule for how the skill chains progress. The chain will now always progress when you use a skill instead of relying on hitting a target. Okay. Did that, does that, hmm. So when block or evade happened, you couldn't finish your chain and you had to restart the chain. I can see how that could be really annoying. Um, again, I, I come from a PvE point of view and in PvE, no one evades or like not that many enemies block, um, you know, or anything like that. So I feel like 
this is like towards PvP and World vs. World, where, you know, evades and those types of things are very common. Um, so that's a good change. I like that. Uh, this aims to help the weapon feel smoother with the skill queuing system and enhances enhance its reliability in competitive modes. Yeah, so exactly what I said. The weapon ended strong in PvE, so there will be some unsurprising downward adjustments to its damage output. Um, yeah, I saw, I, I heard about people were able to make like crazy builds with it where you could stack all this poison and it did like a ton of damage. Um, so a nerf, I, I guess I'm okay with. Um, I hope it's not too stark of a nerf. Uh, its finishing skills and stealth skill will have their target cap arrays to help Thieves 3 identity, uh, uh, identity as a cleaving weapon. Okay, so I think the I think the spear weapons always hit 3, right? And then I guess um, they probably are changing the finishing skills uh, and sk stealth skill to a 5 target, I'm guessing, probably. Um, or maybe 4 target, I don't know. Um... But oh, okay, so it's kind of a little compensation. We're going to get a little bit of a nerf, but we're going to get a little bit of an AoE in there. I like that they're leaning a little bit more into the AoE, just because Guild Wars 2 can be such a, like, cluster when it comes to, like, there's just so many enemies everywhere all the time. Um, so having them, like, be lean a little bit, like, I don't want everything to be AoE all the time, but lean a little bit into AoE is kind of nice. <clears throat> Uh, Ranger. Much like Elemental Sphere, Ranger Spear had a strong narrative theming, but it didn't quite follow through fully in the game. So, before we get into this, so Ranger was one of the low ones for me. Um, I remember, so like, uh, Thief, Mesmer, they were, they were, I, I remember Mesmer was above Thief, I want to say, or maybe right around Thief. Um, Elementalist was one, I think, ranked the same with them. Necromancer I wasn't super impressed with, but it was also like, it felt kind of like, eh. Um, but it wasn't like it wasn't that the skills were bad. It was just like I wasn't just I just wasn't impressed by the weapon in general. Um, but Ranger was really one of the ones. So the, uh, the uh, Ranger and Revenant were the ones that I had like major problems with. I feel like um, where the the th you know and and before I read through this and I see a lot of stealth in here, which is good um, because the thing and it kind of made me laugh. So they had. The mechanic dealt with going into stealth, right? And you would get like flip, flip over skills, like you know your your weapon skills would change if you were in stealth. The problem was that Ranger has no access to stealth. They have like they had one they had a, a one skill on the spear that had like a two charges I think on it, right? Where you could like stealth, but you would run out of charges really quickly, and um and it was really funny to me, uh because in the beta, they had like pre uh, pre created characters of kind of like this is kind of the build. They were kind of steering you in the direction of the build that they were looking for for the specific weapon on this profession. And one of the things was um, that they had for the ranger. They had the I think it was the jaguar. I want to say which has a stealth skill, so it would stealth you. And to me, and I said this during the beta too. It was kind of like this thing where it was like ArenaNet was almost admitting that, hey, you need to use a Jaguar uh, pet um, because you don't have enough stealth. Like, one could look at it as in like, oh, they're just trying to give you more stealth and say like, hey, use the, use the pet that has stealth. But to me, it was kind of like, yeah, we don't have enough stealth on this kit, so we're going to give you like another advantage. But it's like that locks you into using the Jaguar, right? And like... Is that the best pet? I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what the best pets are, but I don't see very many people using it when I run around the open world. Um, so I don't think it's one of the best ones to use. Um, but yeah, so I, I, it really it really was interesting to me because I'm like, well, stealth is a big issue. Like you have the whole mechanic on the ranger be about stealth, and then you don't have a single utility skill that gives you stealth. So I really hope that they thought about this, that they really, you know, we're going to look at this now. So some of its skills, like the stealth skills and beast sting, lack the damage needed to make it a competitive option. Um, the damage was lacking too. Um, the damage was lacking because a lot of them were very, it wasn't clunky necessarily to use, but they were like, they had like these, it was almost like, because you have to kind of prepare, right? You have to stealth yourself and then you have to use the flip over skill. Right. So it's like, 
okay, so there's kind of like this preparation, right? I can't, you know, when, when we just re on stream the other day, we talked about, um, uh, like, Guardian Hammer, right? Guardian Hammer, you just auto-attack because you keep casting that symbol on the ground and it does all the things for you. There's no preparation. You just auto-attack and you can dash out, like, all this damage and all this utility. You get, like, permanent uh, protection and you get, you know, all the things from the symbol, whether it's healing or um, extra damage, vulnerability, all these things, right? So, <clears throat> but when you have a weapon that needs, that has, like, there's two components to it. It's like, I got a stealth and then use the skill. They better have a big payoff, right? Because you kind of have to prepare. Uh, because you can't just, like, run in and stealth yourself and use the thing, right? Because you have to kind of time it, too, sometimes. Uh, depending on, like, you know, if you're in, like, raiding or PvP even. Like, if you're doing a competitive thing, right? Uh, you have to kind of make sure that you land it perfectly. Uh, because, you know, movement is a huge thing in the game. And evasion, like I said, and, like, it blocks and, you know, it, it stealth in general. You know, it's, like, uh, for even other, other classes, you know, that's a thing. So... He, like engineer and thief and stuff have it so um it's it damage is very important to have on these flip over skills these flip over skills have to hit like a train um in order to feel like yeah okay i want to use that right like there has to be a payoff like why do i want to use my stealth skills versus just using the regular skills they have to feel more they have to feel more impactful for me to really want to use that mechanic um <clears throat> so i love that i like that um, additionally, due to the popularity of traps and other pulsing damage skills, it was hard to weave in and out of stealth. Again, yes, huge thing with stealth, um, <clears throat> because it was, you could do a close range thing and then use a trap, because close range traps on rangers can be really good. I think they do, like, a bunch of, like, conditions and stuff, so if you had a condition build, uh, that really works, but then that takes you out of stealth a lot, uh, and complete your attack before you were revealed. To remedy this, Panther's Prowl will now grant Hunter's Prowess for a uh, short duration. Hunter's Prowess will allow you to use your next uh, stealth skill even if you were revealed. Nice. Okay, that's really good. I really like this. So, <clears throat> while they're not completely stepping away from the stealth part of it, that's still a main mechanic, they still give you like, hey, we're still going to be able to use, you're still going to be able to use your stealth skill even if you are revealed. So I like that. Another issue was Pan Panther's Prowl and Spider's Web sharing a cooldown. This was consistent with the rest of the weapon skills, but it made the opportunity cost for using Spider's Web too large. We'll be separating their cooldowns so that using Spider's Web feels good, and you don't have to worry about wasting a charge of stealth. Good. Okay, so we're kind of remedying this. Again, I we still might have an... It, it depends on the damage that we get out of it. Because, um, <clears throat> again, it really has to has to pay off it has to pay off that we're using stealth that we're going into stealth in order to use these um abilities because again and they kind of touch on this and i i didn't touch on this earlier but when you're in stealth you cannot use any other abilities because anything that does damage which is any skill in the game i mean there's not a single skill that doesn't do damage i mean there's some that don't do damage but um there 95 percent of skills in the game do do damage and that reveals you immediately right so if I didn't use Panther's Prowl and I'm trying to use all my stealth skills and stuff and I'm trying to use other things, <clears throat> so it's still iffy. I'm still iffy on this. I don't know if this is still the perfect solution. I really just think, you know, I know, I know redesigning weapons is not something they can do and that's not something they would ever do, but in my opinion having ranger go ham on stealth if you're not like my thing you know how this would work the whole stealth situation if we had an elite specialization if we had an elite specialization that dealt with going to stealth new sets of um a new mechanic right we get a new mechanic that deals with something with our pet right um you know where they could have for example like any pet skill that you use now grants stealth to you, right? They could have that as a mechanic in this new elite specialization, and they could have utility skills, like every utility skill gives you stealth, and every utility skill gives you stealth, but also maybe has like a flip over skill that's like a stealth skill. Like, you know, you have automatic utility skills that are stealth skills, like, you know, whatever they want to call them, right? It could be like ambush skills or whatever. I, I don't know, whatever. I'm throwing out random stuff, but I'm saying like, 
I could totally see this be a functional thing if you have a whole elite specialization that's designed around that, where you have other ways of gaining stealth. But Ranger has such a limited way of gaining stealth that I'm very surprised that that's what they went with. So hopefully, Hunter's uh, Panther's Prowl with Hunter's Prowl, um, Hunter Hunter's Prowess. I'm sorry, Hunter's Prowess um, will remedy that a little bit. Um, and having the whole like Panther's Prowl and Spider uh, Spider's Web, you know, having different cooldowns. Hopefully, that'll kind of remedy that. But again, that's kind of my opinion on that. I really think that that is not something Ranger is designed for. And I just really think that um, this would, I think this would work beautifully as an elite specialization. Having something that's like an elite specialization around stealth and having utility skills, because again, you can, you don't have to use all of those other utility skills. You can swap them out, right? But like having something that mechanic wise kind of integrates stealth into the base class, you know, it kind of adds it to the base class. Um, would really help on this. So we'll have to see. Again, we'll have to see how the damage numbers are. Um, do you guys agree with me on this? I, I don't I don't know. I again I I come from a standpoint of I don't know anything about numbers. I don't know how any build crafting works. I just I kind of I'm like, this is what I imagine, right? This is like I kind of think about the flow of like going through the world and like doing things that way. You know, it's just very like I don't have in-depth knowledge. So if anyone has any more like insight into this, um, you know, and, and maybe knows like, oh no, this is gonna work out beautifully, let me know. I would love to hear it. Um uh, Engineer Spear surged into the scene. <laughs> surged. They they're so punny today. Uh finding a home mainly in condition-based builds in PvE. Uh, it sported competitive numbers, but was still rough around the edges and places, keeping track of who was focused and for how long wasn't an easy task. So we'll be adding a visual aura to your focus target. Okay, so I, I do remember people talking about this. Um, I, I don't think I really got the gist of that in my testing um, because I was just doing PvE. I was just hanging out for a little bit. I think we were on like the ice flow and Thunderhead, uh, Thunderhead Peaks. Um, so, you know, I was just kind of hanging out killing some Brina dredged out there. I don't think it was anything um, really. Maybe, or maybe am I thinking of the video? I feel like I I went there myself, though. Did I? I don't remember. But um, anyways, that's what I have in my mind. But um, yeah, I don't know. Um, it, it, it wasn't, I, I don't play Engineer. I'm going to tell you guys straight up, I have no idea about Engineer. Nothing. Um, so... Visually, it was great. It looked really cool. The I think a lot of people really love the electricity one. Um, the thing is that like a lot of electricity, uh, when we have that in skills in Guild Wars 2, um, specifically with like air entunement, um, the electricity is always like a blue purplish, right? So now we're getting yellow lightning, which is really cool, and I really love that. And visually, it looks really cool. Um, so I'm excited for that. Uh, but yeah, I so the the focus thing, um, the focus thing I heard people talking about was kind of a little bit of an issue. Um, but I don't remember what the actual like. I remember there was like very specific things that people said about it where they were like, this and that and whatever, right? But I don't really remember exactly what the main problems were. So. I don't know. So, but it sounds like visual aura. I hope it's not too obnoxious of an aura um, to see. Uh, but yeah, okay. Uh, we'll also be adding an effect to the player when they have a focused target, making it easier to determine how long the mark will persist. So, is that going to be my effects bar that already goes from like here to like, you know, Egypt over here? Um, because it hasn't been redesigned in like 12 years. So, we have, I mean, uh, that's, I mean, I don't, an effect to the player. So is it going to be an effect over me, over my character model, or is it going to be an effect, like I said, on the bar? Because if it's on the bar, it's not, it's useless. Okay. With, with the thing also is it's not only that the bar is already super long because you have all these different effects on you at any given time and every boon is on that line and every, everything is on there. Right. Um, but it's also like, you know, even, even like the achievement thing, I have no idea where they have that visual effect of achievements on there. 
like on the bar, right? When you can earn an, like I'm talking about like when you go into story step and you can earn an achievement, they have a little thing on the effects bar. Put that somewhere else. Like, is that the only place you can put things on your UI? Like, just put it on the other side or something. I, I don't know. It's just one of those things that drives me crazy. Um, that effect bar is insane. So if it's if it's a thing on the effect bar, it is completely useless and it's not gonna do what they think it's gonna do. So again. I don't know how this effect is. If it's on the model, I think that'll be nice. If it's on the bar, yeah. I mean, it's an effect, right? So, like, effect to the player. We'll be adding an effect to the player. So, does that mean to the player model? I think they mean player model. I'm thinking they mean player model because they understand that, like, adding it to the thing. I would be very surprised if they add it to the bar. Um, so, I don't know. Um, and it'll be interesting to see because... There's also the issue of like, what if I have 75 uh, different infusions on me and I have like legendaries uh, all equipped all around and I'm just a globe, um, you know, I'm, I'm like a shining sun in the darkness. Um, will I be able to see that effect on me when I have a focus target? So again, a couple questions that I have there. Um, we'll have to see. Uh, some casting times were also a bit slow. They'll be sped up to help the weapon feels uh, feel smooth. I do remember people talking about this. I don't know if I had that as a as a as a thing as a like a criticism. I don't know. I don't know if I had that as a, like a critique where I'm like, mm, it feels kind of you know slow. I think maybe there was some skills that felt a little slow. Uh, I'm I'm one of those people that. I really like when a weapon feels faster. I, I like it's not even cast time specifically, but one thing that really bothers me is after cast. There are certain skills in Guild Wars 2 that have a horrible after cast, and I hate it because it feels so interruptive. And I think there was like I think there I remember something like now that I'm saying, oh, a loud train is coming through. Holy crap, that's super loud. Um uh, the, I, I remember there was something during the beta. I got. I, I don't see it being picked up on the capture, but I'm sure you guys can hear. It. That's a loud ass train. Holy crap! Um, the uh, I remember something during the beta when I was playing, uh, where the um, there was something with aftercasts, and I don't know if that was maybe the ranger was like that, or was it the engineer? I don't remember, but there was something with aftercasts where right? where it really like. So for those of you that don't know, so there's like a cast time, right, and then there's a recharge time, but then there's an aftercast, which means that there's a period of time after a skill has been used that you can't use another skill or they can't do something unless it's like an instant skill ability, like a shout or something, you know. Um, but if it's if it's something like another cast time ability or something. That you have to use there there's a period of time where you can't use it and i hate long aftercasts they drive me crazy i i really not that i want everything to be fired really quickly but there there has to be like a sweet spot where i'm like okay this feels good right so i'm hoping that this is what like casting times were a bit slow so i think i think my feedback was that there was long aftercasts but we'll have to see how that kind of falls into each other Right, so um, may maybe the cast times, you know, faster caster time cast times will make it feel better. Uh, lastly, Devastator will see speed increases, a range increase, and a significant reductions. And it's oh, there it is, aftercast. Um, so yeah, I always like when they re when they reduce an aftercast. The skill, like to me, an like changing reducing an aftercast to a lackluster skill is in my opinion, worth more than getting a power increase on something. Because it makes... The thing is, um, you know, combat in Guild Wars 2 is huge on the flow, right? And, like, how you chain skills together and stuff. And if you have something that's, like, you use a skill and you're, like, eh, it's kind of like you trip a little bit, right? Where you're, like, you're running, you're running, and all of a sudden you trip a little bit, and you're, like, oh, my God, because a skill has a long aftercast. And you're just, like, kind of, like, trying to get back into the flow of combat. You know, so to me, aftercast is like a huge thing. When they reduce an aftercast to something, I'm always like, yes. I'm like, it's going to feel so much better to use now. Um, you know, there, there's been many times where that has happened to me. Um, they reduced, like recently, they reduced the aftercast on the Guardian Hammer, for example. Uh, we just talked about it. And um, it feels so good to use now. I mean, it's like a really powerful skill now to use the auto attack um, with the symbol, you know, with the symbol of protection or whatever it's called. And, um, 
it's it's it feels so good now that it doesn't have that long of after aftercast, you know. So, um, anyways, it sounds like they were pretty okay overall. Uh, they just wanted Devastator to be more devastating, I guess. Um, increase and in, in speed and range, um, and then aftercast uh, kind of eliminated. So that's kind of nice. Um, but it sounds like overall they were kind of like, okay, this is fine. You know, they they didn't talk about any specific skills beside Devastator that they wanted to change. So it sounds like they were kind of okay with um with how it all kind of came came around i mean they're still doing numbers and competitive and stuff but um or uh, uh competitive numbers in 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 oh i got it okay i did not read that right so it sported competitive numbers but it's still rougher on the edges so a lot of them kind of were rougher on the edges but that's a beta for you you know uh revenant so let's move on to revenant revenant was hands down my least favorite it was the one where i literally i i was like please redesign it i just i'm like i know redesigning something from the ground up takes way too much work but this is so bad it's so bad um and it's disappointing because scepter from secrets of the obscure was already super disappointing and it's still super disappointing and then now they're not even like they haven't really updated scepter uh on on revenant um and now we have Spear coming in, and Spear felt super lackluster during the beta. It was so slow. It was so slow. And then having being dependent on like the Abyss skill, Crushing Abyss, I guess is what it's called. Oh, it was just like, oh my god. And you couldn't cast it fast enough. And it was just like, oh, you felt like everything was in slow mo. I remember saying this. I felt like I was playing in slow motion. And I'm like, oh my god, this is bad. This is bad. It was just bad. Um, so that was my that was my least favorite weapon, and I've said this over and over and over again. If Arena and it gives me a weapon that that I think for me personally, I know there's tons of Revenant players out there. Nothing against any of you guys. Um, I love Revenant. Okay, as a concept, as a class, like I love it. But one of the things that I've yet to find is a weapon that I feel that when I use it, I'm like, this feels good to use. I'm not a fan of bows, and I'm not a fan of hammers, usually. I like Guardian Hammer now, but, um, so I want, like, a long-range option, you know, and I was hoping Scepter would take it, and I'm super disappointed on how Scepter turned out. I think Scepter is, I think is, pr I haven't really used it because it just feels so bad. It's just another sword, and we already have great sword and swords. Um, that are both melee range, and um, it's such a visual clutter, and I'm super disappointed. And then Spear was kind of like, uh, so if they can make it good, I, I've I've been saying this for a long time. If they can give me a long range, a good long range weapon on Revenant, I will probably main Revenant, um, you know, because I love it so much. But so far, I haven't really gotten a weapon where I'm like, this feels great, this feels good. Uh, and I'm really hoping that Spear could be it. So let's read about it. Revenant Spear aimed to be a heavy weapon that build up strength, culminating in a uh, in powerful damage. However, in the beta, we saw that this weight was unwieldy, 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 and its punches lacked impact. Casting times are being decreased across many skills, and we're decreasing, increasing the damage. It, my God, I can't read. Holy crap, let's retry that whole sentence. Casting times are being decreased across many skills, and we're increasing the condition variety of the skills to help its damage stick. Okay, good. Don't... Uh, okay, you know what? No, I just, I'm going to stop myself beforehand. It's probably going to be... Uh, we've talked about this. Heavy Torment, right? Um, I feel like Torment... I feel like there's a video somewhere <laughs> that deals with just discussing torment as a as a condition um arena that has gone so ham on just making torment the be all and all damage dealing condition beside like uh you know um uh, uh burning you know um for the most part at least right we have a little bit of confusion on the mesmer that you know is heavy on that there um and we have uh, what's another one? Uh, bleeding on Mesmer and some others, you know, Reaper has, like, huge bleeding stuff. Um, you know, there, there, there is, you know, and Poison still does okay, too, but I, I really, I, I really wish that, like, you know, I, I think, I think Revenant, like, really, like, 
having the main component like condition be uh torment is perfect i think it fits perfectly on the revenant just because of like malik's and you know like the demon stands demon uh legendary demon stands or whatever um so i i think it fits um it's just one of those things where i'm like man i wish we could more variety on other classes too but anyways so casting times are being decreased uh which really needed to be uh, i think after cast might have been an issue here as well um damage not being increased i don't know let's continue reading um crushing so they're adding conditions so they're they're kind of going down on a this this is going to be condition based weapon i feel like more so than power damage so power damage is kind of out the window so we get another long range condition damage weapon which we have the the thing is if you're if you're competing the the thing is they need to look at wh what is the competing weapon here i think the best long range condition damage weapon or the really the only one we have um is shortbow um so shortbow does really well i think shortbow stacks i mean shortbow has burning has a ton of bleeding um so it, and it's i think it does really well i think shortbow is a really good weapon i haven't used a shortbow on a revenant in a long time but from what i understand it does really well so it needs to compete with that if you're going to do a long range or a hybrid weapon at least if you're doing going to do a condition damage i think the best condition damage weapon right now is shortbow on the revenant um even for close range or whatever um so if you're going to do something that's going to step into the condition damage it needs to be competitive with that. So we're going to have to kind of see how the condition variety, how that kind of, um, you know. Uh, Crushing Abyss's maximum stacks has been reduced from 5 to 3, which is good. So that was one of the big things. Keeping up with having 5 stacks of Crushing, cr crushing Abyss was, like, impossible. It was just, like, everything was so slow to cast. And it's like you're stuck just using Crushing Abyss the whole time in order to keep up the stacks. You're just casting 5 the whole time. And it's like they wanted you to use like wasn't the mechanic of like once you have five stacks of crushing abyss you want to use a different ability because that enables them to do something else or something and makes them stronger or something um so yeah i it just uh, yeah i don't know so changing that to three is i think a good change i think that makes it a lot easier um to kind of use other skills other weapons uh revenant still kind of deals a little bit with the um you know, Revenant is one of those things where you have to weave in and out of different legends in order to deal with energy management. I still think that there's some kind of energy management issue because I feel like having high cost on some skills, you you end up you end up the skills that aren't as impactful in combat, whether it's damage wise or boon wise or condition wise or whatever, right? They get left behind a lot just because you want to spend your your energy on um on the big impactful ones right so I, th I i'm still one of those people that maybe thinks that weapon skills maybe shouldn't have an energy cost that might completely you know and increase the and increase the energy cost on utility skills but have it only be utility skills that cost energy i might be the only person that thinks that way i don't know again i don't know nothing about build crafting or anything like that i have no idea so um don't hate me for the things that i say i have no idea um that probably might create more problems um than it's worth doing so maybe the current system kind of works uh but anyways so uh but it's nice that we don't have to keep casting that five times in order to get the maximum sex out of it so that's good uh abyssal blood will now pull immediately helping the weapon set uh, itself feel better so abyssal blood was like my favorite was like one of my favorite skills overall during the beta because it's this dark field where the spikes come out oh and it's it looks so cool and it feel it felt really good it was a one skill where i'm like this feels really impactful um it's a nice aoe it does like damage it's really and it pulls in so there's like um some um break bar damage you know so it, it like really felt really good so pull immediately i mean you know great you know it's it's fine it, it did it after like a short like two seconds or three seconds or something so uh the result of these changes is a more fluid weapon with more tools to secure its damage so this is lackluster um i don't know if this really is gonna bring the spear into a competitive spot again i don't know i i don't know too much i haven't played revenant like I said i i just 
having a weapon that really feels good for me to use that isn't a melee weapon has been very like it has been very upsetting for me because I really love as someone that loves the lore and makes hundreds of videos about lore, right? Like I, I really I, I want Revenant I, I I don't know. I'm I'm looking for like I, I'm looking for a mage class. I'm looking for a mage rift like a rift mage, like a, a or, or a mist mage, right? Like because the revenant deals with a lot of like I'm looking for some. I'm looking a little, a little bit more of a magi -y type of gameplay uh, in the revenant, and I feel like we haven't gotten that yet. Um, so it's fine. I mean, I I really hope that those people that are playing revenant and that are maining revenant uh, will be happy with the changes to the spear. I might. I'm, I'm still gonna try it out. Obviously, I'm still gonna. You know, I have plenty of revenants on my account, so I'm still gonna try it out and see how it is. Um, so do you guys think that's do you guys think this is good? Do you guys think this is like good enough changes for it to feel really good? Um, because the damage itself was okay, it was just really slow. I remember it's so slow, it was just so slow. Oh my god, so slow. Um, I just, yeah, I just think back of that moment where I'm like, I'm casting this and my character is just like moving like this. It was bad. Uh, anyways, so let me know what you guys think about that. Guardian. So Guardian to me was, um, I, I want to say beside Elementalist, it was like my top weapon. I really liked it. I thought it was really good. Um, I, I thought it worked really well. Um, I, I thought it was, it. It had like I I love the way oh that's bit, I'm sorry um it had this like the functionality of the like luminance thing whatever it's called do they mean mention it here the the illuminating or whatever it's called like illuminate thing or whatever it worked really well because you could bounce it off of each skill so like when one is illuminated you would illuminate the next one and it felt really good. I don't know. I really, really enjoyed Guardian. It was the first one that I tried, and it was, it was. I honestly, I really liked it. I thought it was really good. Um, so I don't know what they're gonna change to this. Again, I could be completely wrong. I thought it was one of the better ones. Um, Guardian shone brightly in World of the World, especially in large scale fights. Uh, Spear's biggest pain point was how its second skill functioned. Pressing the key again to stop early felt awkward. Um, felt awkward, but it was nice. I actually liked having that. I talked about that. And I had a few bugs. Okay, well, I didn't know about that. But, um... So I'm, I'm continuing reading quietly. I don't know why. Um, Helio Rush is seeing an update similar to the Elementalist Ripple. It is now a ground target and you will stop uh, when reaching the target location. So I guess that's good. Because uh, because if I target a specific enemy, um, I, I think that'll work. I think we don't need something where you can stop it early, uh, but go into your target. I think I think that's a good change. I think that'll still that'll feel good. Um, yeah, because I think the issue was that you would run through your targets and you would you know it, it doesn't matter how many enemies or whatever you hit, you would go to your designated spot, um, like the end of the like it would just go until the end of the skill like you know it's like a two second skill so you run for two seconds forward and then you stop or whatever it is right um so now having like stop at my location i guess that's good i like that so i, I guess that's a good change um you don't need a stop early thing that's kind of weird as toolkit is getting some updates like improvements to its self-healing and healing on solar storm okay did we need that did we need more self-healing on it? I thought it was fine. I The thing is, like, I feel like Guardian is one of those that has so much self-healing already. Like, utility skills, a lot of them heal. Um, you have your passive from your F2, right? Um, that constantly heals you, and you can press it to heal yourself. Um, so do we really need that much self-healing? I don't know. But, um, you know, I'm always okay with self-healing. I'm, you know, I'm one of those, like slobs that just likes to like just whatever eh, i'm poking you oh i'm almost dead i'm gonna poke you more and hope i don't die so self-healing is always good uh solar storm solar storm was the flip over skill i want to say it was like the was that the illuminated skill four or something like that um which has like a bigger aoe i, I forgot what it does but um i guess there's healing involved which is nice so symbol of luminance will now always apply resistance to allies once Oh, okay. So I guess the symbol of luminance only when it was illuminated would do 
um, would apply resistance, but it does it. At, uh, but it would do it. So pretty much what it does now, if it's illuminated, it'll do more resist. It'll cast resistance more often or something. So, um, like I said, it didn't really need that much in changes. I thought the uh, I thought the guardian spear was pretty good the way it was. I mean, again, you guys can don't bash me, but um, <laughs> please don't bash me. Please don't tease me. Um, but yeah, I, I thought Guardian was good, Guardian Sphere. I thought it was a pretty well put together kit, and I thought it had a good place, and I can't wait to use it, personally. I am very excited. That's one weapon I'm really looking forward to. Uh, okay, now to my main. So you guys know I am maining a Spellbreaker right now. Um, I had some issues with some of the stuff. I am super happy about getting a long-range power damage weapon on the warrior. Thank God, finally. I can I can forget about longbow, and I can forget about rifle, and I can move on with my life and use a spear. I'm okay with that. Um, but yeah, it was. I, I didn't dislike it. I thought it was good. Um, there was a, a couple of things with the ground targeting um, where I guess people were saying it doesn't, so the skill, or in the video, or in the preview, or whatever, they were talking about the skill follows your, um, the, 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 the targeting follows your care, uh, the, your target. Um, but some people were saying, oh, it doesn't do that on some of the skills or something. Um, so people were having issues with that. And there was also the issue of, like, the closer you were, the smaller the AoEs were. And then the farther away you were, the bigger the AoEs were. Some people were not really okay with that. Um, so I don't know. I thought it was pretty good. I thought I I don't know. I didn't really have those issues that people were seeing with it. Um, I remember we were in Diesa Plateau running around, um, and I, I thought it was pretty good. I, I didn't have like a huge issue with it. Um, you know, warrior skills are very nondescript. You know, they're not like visually impressive. They're very much just like onga bonga, like do damage kind of thing. Um, so I mean, I'm like, D -d -d, you know, um, one thing that I did find was there was like a lack of any type of boons. We didn't really have like, because usually like some of the traits and some of the th things the builds and stuff that um you know the self-sustain that we have like uh, might makes right and stuff um depend on might generation and there wasn't a lot of might generation or any boons it was just straight up damage so that was maybe a little lackluster for me i would like to see maybe a little bit of variety of that um but i thought overall was pretty good it felt pretty good to me at least so let's see what they say uh spear and warrior was met with mixed reception okay it was a strong option in PvP, but didn't stand out in other places. Its range threshold mechanic also didn't garner a warm welcome. I do remember that a lot of people were upset about that. And like I said, I did mention that a little bit. A lot of people, I was kind of iffy on it. I mean, I'm not, you know, I, I think it's still fine. Um, what? It was the, was it the farther away they were, the smaller the AoE and the closer you were, the bigger the AoE. That's how it was, right? Um, nonetheless, I, I just... Um, Warrior Spear will be updated to feature a new mechanic. Whoa, we have a feature... We have a feature we'd work. Let's forget everything I was going to say and read this. We want to em uh, emphasize the force the warrior is launching the spear with, but in a different way. Instead of effectiveness var varying by distance... Skills will now do more damage to the first target struck. Spear Swipe will get some updates to its functionality. So Spear Swipe was the one that, like, you would evade backward and then, like, slash your spear or something and create, like, this wind arc to push enemies back, right? I think that's what it was. Uh, such as cooldown refund if you evade an attack with it. Oh, that's cool. I like that. That's See, I like that. See, that's like thinking outside the box. It's not just we're reducing the cooldown, but it's like, hey, if you manage to do this right, you get rewarded, right? I like that. It's cool. Most important note is that the Spear Marshal has been sent back to Remedial J uh, uh, Javanel School. Javanel School? As Spear Marshal's support has been improved and will now track the target better. Okay, Spear Marshal's support. I That's what I was talking about. I guess the tracking on it was not that great. Um, okay, so the... So, okay. I'm... Whew. Okay, so... 
from what I understand, and let me reread this. We want we want to emphasize the force the warriors launching their spears with, but in a different way. Instead of effectiveness varying by distance, so instead of having the closer you are, the bigger the AOE or something. I think that's how it was, right? It was like the closer I am, the bigger the AOE because I'm closer and my force is more, right? The farther away it is, my force was less, so the AOEs were smaller. So instead of having that, they're all going to be a set AOE range, but they're going to do more damage on the first target the closer I am. I think that's a good middle ground. I, I'm okay with that. I mean... Again, and I talked about this before we did the beta. The thing is, it depends on how it feels at the longest distance. Because if at the longest distance it feels like crap, then it becomes a, then becomes a melee weapon. You see what I'm saying? Because then it's like, I have to be close to the target in order to make these skills feel impactful and really have that force that they're talking about, right? Really get that force out of the warrior. Um, so there's a little bit of a... You know, if the dis if if at distance I can make a build that feels good as a long range, then I would be okay with that. You know, I mean, as it's like, uh, I I think that there's something there's something to be said about that, right? Like, it, it, about you know, we don't know the specifics of it, um, but yeah, so. Um, we don't have exact numbers on this. We don't know exactly how they're changing all of these things. We don't know. Um, there and like I said, this might not be the only changes. There might be more. You know, they're very broad on like, oh, all the all the skills are getting a recharge, re reduce cooldown or whatever, right? And it's like, okay, well, um, in what way? We don't know, right? Um, but I like the changes to the warrior on that because that was, I guess, that was the one thing that I could perhaps like. I was okay with it, but I could perhaps say that like having larger AOEs at like closer distance kind of was like, I want to play it as a, I want to like it made you want to play as a melee character because then you would get larger AOEs, right? And you would get more, and it's like, whoa, that's not a long range weapon. So again, if the long range can, if the twelve hundred range feels good to use and I do good damage then you know what no complaints I'm happy with that uh, well that wraps things up for the high level changes coming to spears when they launch with Janthe or Wiles for the exact numbers and smaller changes be sure to check out so smaller changes are coming um, check out the official release notes when the expansion is live August 20th until next time I'll see you in the mist so um, I like this. I mean, I really like this. I think um, they they were specific enough. Again, I talk a little bit about transparency and blah, 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 whatever, right? Um, you know, and I, I talk about how they never give us specifics. They always talk about, like, in broader terms. Um, I totally understand that they can't give us very specific things on the weapons here. I totally get that. But I think that they were specific enough on most of these. There's some of them where I'm, like, a little, like... Mm, you know, like, I, I still think that, like, Ranger is iffy and, you know, it's like Revenant. I feel like you could have gotten more, a little bit more detail. But that's be mean, me being nitpicky. So it's not, it's not at all, like, you know, whatever. I, I am very happy with this. I'm super happy. Um, and I'm going to kind of just, because we're done with this. Um, so just pull me up. Um, but I'm, I'm super happy with this. I'm really happy with this. I love, love, love that ArenaNet took the feedback. It clearly sounded like, because like I said, I'm like, yeah, I read about this. I read people had issues with this. I read about this, blah, 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 blah. So they took actual feedback that was available. Because uh, like I said, I haven't been on the forums. So this is not just feedback from the forums. Um, maybe this was all on the forums. Maybe they just solely looked at it. But from what it looks like to me, they were looking at all kinds of different places. So they took the feedback to heart, okay? And to me, that's very important. Uh, I really like that. The transparency of, hey, we acknowledge that some of these weapons are very lackluster and we're going to make changes. Because from what I remember for Secrets of the Obscure, they didn't really do this. They did a beta and then they didn't... I, I don't I don't remember if they gave us feedback to the feedback that we gave. Um, and then the changes weren't very significant once the weapons came out. They still, a lot of them were like, well, we told them about this and they didn't change it. Well, this was something that was, you know, a lot of people talked about and they didn't change it. Right. So but now it really sounds like they listened, which is always good. You want you want your developers to listen to your player base because you don't have a you don't have a test server. ArenaNet doesn't have a test server for Guild Wars or Guild Wars 2. And so when you make changes like that, 
um, even if you test it internally, there's no testing that you can do that um, that you know the player base isn't going to find a way to break or whatever or you know like the player base is going to be much better in terms of being testers than i feel like you know the developers ever could because it's it's a bigger broader you know these people like there's some people that really sit down and um they you know they sit down and they go into the numbers and they do all of these things and they blah 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 blah, blah. you know the arena developers have other things to do than to just sit there and stare at numbers all day you know some people might have the time to do that um so again not having private test servers um this this is us testing right and it's like i i like that they listen to the feedback because that's you know it, i think there's there's also the the thing where the little bit of an appreciation right where it feels it feels like arena that appreciates us because they're letting us test the weapons not that you know obviously they do that because they probably don't have that large amount of testers themselves so they have to just kind of like okay what do we do um you know so we're we're kind of like oh we might use the player base you know it's not necessarily of the goodness of their heart that they let us test it but it's kind of like hey you know what we, we think you guys give good feedback. You guys know what you're talking about. So we're going to listen to your feedback. So we're going to give you these betas. So I, I really like this. I really, really like this. I got to applaud ArenaNet for this. I think this was a great move. I really, I've been talking about this. I'm like, give us feedback on the feedback. You know what I mean? I That was one of the things I'm like, okay, you gave us a beta. Um, you let us try the weapons. You let us give us, you gave us these avenues of giving you feedback on the forums, on Reddit. You know, there's a Reddit thread for every single profession. You know, we could, you know, we can post on all these social media platforms. We have all these avenues to reach you and, and get to you, right? Um, and, you know, but please, you have to listen to some of it. At least, not all of it. I get that there's some criticism that some people might say, well, this is stupid or whatever, right? And But the ones that you see reoccurring, which clearly they looked at this and they, they it really shows that I think they were looking to like listen to reoccurring things that people were saying. Um, I, I got to applaud them. I think they did really, really well with that. And I hope that they will continue doing stuff like that. Um, you know, the communication of feedback, right? Like, how are you receiving feedback? You know, it was one of the things that, um, just to finish off here real quick, a little story, but um, back in the day, whenever releases came out, specifically for the living world, they would do this. Um, they would they would have like AMAs on Reddit, right? Where they would like take feedback um, or not necessarily feedback, but kind of talk about the release a little bit in depth. You know, they, they would do like streams before the release would come out where they'd like, or and even after the release would come out where they talked about all these in-depth things about stuff and they've kind of stepped away from doing that like they used to have a running uh stream show called guilt chat and i don't think they even do guilt chat anymore you know it's just kind of like the communication of not just the communication but the like the the review on like feedback has has kind of been like lost to time a little bit where it's just like does arena net even listen to some of the feedback that we're giving is this like are, are they just like not are they not like what what's going on you know so this is a step in the perfect direction and i love this and i would love to see like it can't i don't think it takes that much manpower to come up with a blog post of like general ideas of feedback that they've listened to not just for weapons but for anything you know for like the releases on expansions for features that are coming out right like once once we go into the expansion get feedback on homesteads get feedback on the warclaw on the new things for warclaw on the convergences on the raids like get feedback on that and give us blog posts give us updates on what you have listened to like i think the player base would appreciate that so much and it goes so far to really show that arena net listens you know it's like you know, sometimes it's, it's sometimes it's just good to know that they're listening, you know, sometimes whether they're listening to specifically the criticism that I have or not, like, it's just good to know that, hey, Arena is listening um, and and they're looking at the feedback and they're um, they trust their player base and they want their player, their, their game to be good. And, um, you know, if you're leaving testing up to us, then trust us to know what we're talking about as a collective as a collective right um it's like i said there's i'm sure there's specific things where you can be like looking at and be like that feedback is just non whatever like it's you know like me saying like 
uh, stealth doesn't work on ranger. Like, I might be the only person that thinks that way, and that's not necessarily, but if there's, like, 300 other, you know, comments on things and, you know, tweets and videos and whatever that all say the same thing, then maybe that's not a good idea to do, right? So, uh, anyways, so, uh, yeah, that's kind of the the end of that. Um, before we head out, so if, if you're about to click off the video, which I totally get, um, uh, hold on for just a second. Um, so, not like a huge announcement. This has been going on. So, on my channel, just so you guys know, I am doing a Janthea Wiles uh, expansion code giveaway, okay? Uh, it's on my community tab if you go on YouTube. Uh, I will be giving out the code through Discord, uh, just because for, like, my own, like, I guess assurance uh in the way that i want to give out the code because uh, i've been thinking about like how technical like technically this would work how i would get the code out to someone um so i i, I want to do it through discord so you have to have a discord account um but uh it doesn't matter if you're the steam version or the regular version it doesn't matter um uh, because i i haven't actually bought the expansion that i'm going to give out i'm going to do it once the winner comes out so uh go on the community tab um, just post whatever your favorite region is. I, I picked a random subject. I wanted just something to actually engage with people. It doesn't really matter. There was someone that even said like, I, I'm new to the game and I have I don't have a favorite region. That's okay too, because eventually you'll have a favorite region. Everyone does, I feel like, you know? So favorite map, favorite regions, favorite place, whatever, right? It doesn't matter. Um, just let me know, just comment on there um, and you can enter to win. Uh, I'm giving one code away. Um, I, I was thinking about if if the post would blow up. So if I can get like, you know, like, I don't know, 50 different people on there, like I might consider doing like if, if it's anywhere between 50 and 100 people, I might consider doing like a second code giveaway. I don't know. Um, but as of right now, I mean, the chances just so you guys know, the chances are still really high be, uh, for, for anyone to win because right now I think I only have like 15 people, 16 people maybe that have entered. So the chances are really good to win um, still. So if you guys want to have a free second account, give it to your brother, sister, boyfriend, husband, wife, you know, whatever, right? Mom, grandma, you know, whoever's playing Guild Wars 2. Like, you know, uh, I just... You can enter there. Um, and then also, I will be streaming Janthea Wiles, just so you know, on the 20th and the 21st, I will be streaming right here on YouTube. Um, and the streams will go up. Um, oh, the drawing, by the way, the drawing ends on the 18th. Uh, so I'm do I'm streaming on the 18th. That's two days before the release. That's the Sunday before the release. Uh, the release is on Tuesday, the 20th. Um, so I will be streaming. I will be announcing the winner. You don't have to watch the stream. Um, I will be... I will be commenting on whoever wins on that on that post and I will get with them um to um to give the to give their code right to give the to get them their code um so uh but yeah just so you guys know I will be streaming Janthea Wilds and um I will be doing that on the 20th and the 21st we'll be doing um two streams uh, I will be doing the first map on the first day and then second map on the second day. And uh, we're going to, you know, do homesteads in between or whatever, whatever else. We don't really know what else is entailed there. We'll do the story. We'll do map completion for both of them. And uh, and I'll give you guys my feedback. So make sure you join me for that. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much. I appreciate it. We're at way too long of a video. So I hope you guys stuck around with me uh, for this long. I really, really appreciate it. And like I said, I am working on a regional lore video series. So that should be coming up. I don't think I'm going to get this done before Gen 3 Wells. I'm going to be honest with you guys. I don't. It is way more work than I thought it was going to be. Um, but just so you know, in the near future, uh, that's why I haven't been releasing many structured videos uh, not a lot. I haven't released any Diginos. Uh, they are coming back. I am going to be making more of those. I'm making other videos that I have planned. But right now, I would like to do this original lore video. It's a series of nine videos, shorter videos, talking about the core game of Guild Wars 2. So um, make make sure you tune, uh, stay tuned for that. So anyways, thank you guys so much, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, guys. <laughs>